Okay, here we are, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, create uh, elements for your digital scrapbooking layouts. And the element that we're going to create, or embellishment, are going to be beads. And they can be different colored beads, or a uh, single strand of uh, uh, the same color beads, or uh, you can just create uh, different single beads and then kind of put them together in a strand. But what I'm going to do is show you how you can easily create one, and then you can do whatever you'd like after that. So here I am, I am in Photoshop Element 7, and I have my original uh, layout, uh, actually just a blank uh, page here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a new layer, because I want to work on a separate layer for this. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to choose a color that I want to use for the bead. And for now, well, since it's up there, let's go ahead and just kind of choose a red color. So what I need to do now is go over to my uh, marquee tools. If it's set on rectangular, you want to go down and you want to choose the elliptical marquee tool. Make sure that one's selected. And when you're holding the shift key down, just go ahead with your left mouse button, just click it and drag it out. And what happens is when you have the shift key down, it keeps it a perfect circle. If you let, let the uh, shift key go, then it'll make it more of an elliptical circle instead of a, a regular circle. So once again, I'm going to hold the shift key down. Now you can see that I have the marching ants uh, ready to go for creating our bead. And all I need to do with the uh, top swatch, the color of the bead that I want, I'm going to go up to my paint bucket tool. And I'm going to click inside those marching ants and now I have my circle, which we will make into the bead. So now that we have our red color, what I want to do is go up to the filters, go down to render and choose lens flare and here's our different options for the lens flare. You can choose uh, uh, 30 to 300 millimeter zoom, 35 millimeter prime, 105 millimeter prime, or movie prime. And I think with this one I'm going to do is I want more of a solid uh, flare at the bottom. So I'm going to choose the 105 millimeter prime. And you can make adjustments depending on how much uh, brightness you want on the bead with the brightness little control here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just uh, try, uh, let's see, 155. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit OK. And right now it gives it a little bit of a 3D look, but we're going to go and do it a little bit more. So I'm going to go up to Filter again, go down to Distort, and choose Sphere Eyes. And what that's going to do is kind of give it a 3D sphere kind of look rather than a flat look on the paper. And I'm going to make sure 100 is the amount, 100% is the amount that we chose. Otherwise, it's just going to look a little bit like a bulge uh, coming through the paper. We want it to actually look like an actual sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. It gives it a little bit more of a round look to it. And the last thing I'm going to do, actually it's not the last thing, one other thing I'm going to do is go over and I'm going to choose my white swatch. And what I had to do was hit these little arrows and flip them around. I'm going to go up to my paintbrush tool and I'm going to choose a soft brushed paint brush so that the edge is a little bit soft and I'm going to change my opacity don't want it to be a full hundred percent I want a little bit of the red coming through so I'm going to change it maybe down to about say fifty percent and you can uh, kind of mess with the brush sizes here if you like uh, you could use the brackets on your keyboard to adjust the sizes so what I'm going to do is just kind of on the left hand side I'm just going to make just a little bit of a, a design there, just a little bit of a paint on there. It gives it a little bit more of a 3D uh, illusion, kind of making a little like a highlight hitting on that side also. And now the last thing I'm going to do is go over to my drop shadows. It's already set up over here but if you have it set up on something different you can always click over on the layer styles and then choose from the drop down menu drop shadows. And I'm just going to create a simple one, the one on the far right here. And I'm going to drag it over to my element. And then as you can see that it did create the little drop shadow down there. And if you want a little bit more of a shadow, just go down to your layer. Double click the little FX uh, icon there. And here's where you can adjust the size and the distance of the shadows. And also the opacity. So go ahead and hit OK there. And right now what we have is uh, the element or our, our bead is on a white background. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that background, hit the choose the background layer and hit the trash can. And we deleted that. Now the background is transparent. 
And I'm going to hit Control D to get rid of the marching ants. And you can see that's a, a pretty nice looking three-dimensional uh, three bead. And what I can do if I'm working on a, um, I can either just save it the way it is, or if I want to create an actual element that had a whole bunch of them on a string, what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a bigger paper. So I'm going to go File, New Blank File, and I'm going to choose, uh, we'll say 8x8 again, but this time we'll do 300 dots per inch. Hit OK. I'll go back over to the bead that I just created. I'm going to go over to my Move tool, and I'm just going to drag that bead right over to the new file that I created. So we'll do that maybe four or five times. Just kind of bring them over. There we go. And then what I can do is take these and kind of put them next to each other. Kind of making like a beaded strand. Like so. Let's do one more here. There we go. And if I want to use this strand just as a separate uh, element all on its own, what I can do is go to all of the layers and holding the shift key down, just select all of the beads. And then I can right click on it and say merge layers. And now these beads are actually one element that we can work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this background a little bit darker so I can see what I'm going to do next. Hit OK. And take my paint bucket tool. Make sure the uh, background layer is selected. And click on there. And one last thing I want to do is I want to make this a little bit smaller. A little bit too big for right now. That's the nice thing about when you merge them together. You can do them all as one element. Now I'm going to go back over to my uh, color swatch and I'm going to choose maybe kind of a light tan color. Around there. I'm going to go to my... Actually, you know what? I'm going to make a new layer out of this just in case I mess up. So I'm going to go and I'm going to hit create new layer. Go to my paintbrush tool and now I want a small layer because what I'm going to do is just kind of draw a string for the beads. And let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Go back to my paintbrush tool. And I'm just going to go and just make kind of a string on each side. And then the last thing I'm going to do for that is I'm going to add a drop shadow to that also so it matches the drop shadow on the other ones. So now if I go and I can get rid of that background layer now the entire element is on a transparent background. What I can do is I can save that and add it to another uh, digital paper. In fact, let me go ahead and open one up so we can kind of take a look to see what it looks like. Just uh, pull up a St. Patrick's Day one here real quick. There we go. Now actually I have these beads and the string on two layers, so we're going to go and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Have the one layer selected. Hold the shift key down, select the other layer, right click and hit merge layers. And now what I can do is take all of these beads with my move tool and slide them over to this element, or I'm sorry, to this paper. And there we have our own uh, element or embellishment that we created for one of our digital scrapbooking layouts. And once we have that, we can obviously turn it and rotate it and do whatever we need to after that however you want your element uh, to be as part of the design and you can make it bigger and smaller also. So there you have it. There's a real easy way to create beads for your digital scrapbooking layout.